Hi everyone! In this part, you are going to have to modify the source code of the lab to do stuff after you win the race condition. Yeah, finally! Exploitation stuff. In order to do so, you're going to have to craft fake userland announcements in userland. And these will be parsed by the kernel. Also, the goal is going to be to detect from userland that the kernel touch your userland announcements and so that you won the race. And finally, you're going to have to find a good spot to set a breakpoint so you can actually debug that you won the race very easily in all the future labs. OK, let's get started. As we said, most of the code in the main loop is executed for each iteration of the loop. And so we don't really want to set a breakpoint that would be executed each time an announcement is parsed. And so we are going to set a breakpoint in an area that is never reached in a normal scenario. And so we're choosing to set a breakpoint in the code handling superior announcements. And so this breakpoint will only hit when the kernel code is starting to handle our fake user and key announcement. So the lab we're going to work on right now is called race wind detection. And so the main goal is to craft a good spray at K enlistment and a good trap K enlistment and hit a breakpoint in the debugger after we win the race condition. And so we are still going to use the bang patch command in the debugger to help us win the race. But instead of spraying A's in the name pipe to replace our K enlistments, that we want to use after free, we are going to craft a spray k enlistment that will have its next same RM fling pointer at the right offset inside the name pipe chunk. And this spray k enlistment will be pointing to a trap k enlistment that has its next same RM fling pointer pointing to itself. So the kernel infinite loop. And so by making the trap k enlistment have the superior flag, it will ease debugging. The debugger should kick in right after we win the race and we should be able to debug the change of flag on our trap k enlistment. One thing to say that we won't be able to debug our spray enlistment because our breakpoint will only hit after the spray k enlistment next CMRM fling pointer is retrieved at the end of the main loop. And so the next iteration of the loop will be executed on our trap enlistment and then our debugger will kick in. So let's start from the race wind detection.c file and more specifically the main function. So we can see we have instructions, which is to craft uh, a spray enlistment as well as a trap enlistment. Uh, use winback to assist in blocking the recovery thread and then add code to detect the race was won uh, from userland. We can see that there is the exploit init function that just initialized the uh, variables for the export bars structure. We see it's checking the number of cores to make sure we have at least two CPUs so we can actually create different threads in different cores. So then it's calling uh, the init fake enlistment function. So we can see this function is defined in race wind detection .c, the same C file, and that we're going to have to um, add code to this function. But the main thing is that its goal is to actually create two fake enlistments, a spray enlistment that will replace the freed k enlistment chunk before we trigger the use after free. And the spray enlistment in New Zealand will have to point to another enlistment called trap enlistment. And this trap enlistment will point to itself to make sure that we are able to trap the kernel into an infinite loop. And so this init fake enlistment calls two functions, build trap enlistment as well as init spray enlistment. So if we look at build trap enlistment, we can see that this function is designed to build a trap enlistment that points to itself. So we can see that it's allocating an object header that needs to be before the k enlistment structure. And it's also allocating a k transaction because we saw that we need the k enlistment to have a valid transaction field. So it's initializing a pointer count for the object header and then it's filling some mutex information into the k enlistment. And we see we'll have to actually fill certain fields in order to um, make the kernel happy. So once that trap enlistment is saved into the export vars structure, we see that we have to actually find an offset in the chunk that actually points to the fake 
k-enismens and the reason is because we're going to use NumPy to spread the data and we're going to have to take into account the structures from both the NumPy and the k-enismens so the offset of the next MRM flink pointer when it's retrieved is a valid pointer so we can see init spray enismens is called and it's passed the spray enismens size as well as the pointer to the trap enlistment that has just been initialized. And so this function allocates a chunk of the actual size that has been spread. And then it actually assumes the k enlistment starts from the beginning of the chunk plus the offset that we need to find out. And so because we are building our spray enlistment and we want that spray enlistment to point to the trap enlistment, since we've passed our trap enlistment at the flink argument, the last thing we have to do is basically to point our spray enlistment next MRM flink pointer to the actual trap enlistment. So basically the init fake enlistment builds the trap enlistment and then create the spray enlistment and make the spray enlistment point to the trap enlistment. So now we go back to the main function and we see it called the init threads and KTM object. So we've seen this function before because it's defined in trigger.c. But basically this function will initialize the KTM object so we have all the environment so we can recover the resource manager and trigger the bug. But it also defines the threads that such the recovery thread which triggered the bug, but also the pipe service thread which actually help us spray name pipe chunks. So we, when we want to replace the freed canisman before the use after free. And now we're back to the main function and we see it called the race recovering resource manager user non detection function, which is specific to this race win detection.c. And this function is responsible for looping over our enlistments while we trigger the bug. So we can see instructions telling us that we need to actually at least detect that 32 k enlistments have been touched by the kernel before we can actually free the latest one that has been touched. So we work around the delayed free list. We see here that we set the event to actually make the recovery thread trigger the bug in another thread. And then from the main thread, what we're going to do is we're going to read the notification. So we see here we at least read up to 32 notification to make sure we can bypass the delayed free list mitigation. So if we if we went over more than the number of elements that we have defined, it means we won't be able to trigger the, the race condition. So we exit the loop. After that, we see that we start from the latest enlistment that has been touched um, and we decrease that index. So we free the latest one and then we free at least 31 other enlistments to bypass the delayed free list mitigation. And for each enlistment, we not only commit completed, but also close the, the handle. So the enlistment is finalized, but also freed. Now we have the code to actually spray name pipe chunks. And we can see we pass the spray enlistment as an argument. So it's going to actually use the chain of enlistment that we previously built. Then we see additional instructions. So it's telling us to unpatch the recovery thread and then we will be able to analyze if our spread enlistment actually replaced the k enlistment that has just been freed and also analyze if the different offset and fields that we have defined make the kernel happy. And the last thing we see here is that there is a test that need, we need to add. So basically because the kernel is going to touch our fake user non enlistment and it's going to actually unset the notifiable flag. We can loop here and detect when this happens. And so when this happens, we can just say return true. We won the race. Okay, now it's your turn.